Hello everybody, Sanyer, Engineer, MBA, and Investor. In today's video, I want to talk about the breaking news of CRISPR therapeutics announcing they are going forward with their clinical trial with their first patient being enrolled by year's end. This is with the Viacite partnership for them tackling type 1 diabetes. Before we do that, before we look at today's press release, you guys know what I will ask you smash that like button, destroy that like button. You guys know how the YouTube algorithms work. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. Really does help the channel. The community is growing. Guys, we don't offer merch. We don't have anything to sell to you guys. No courses, nothing. All I ask you guys is your attention, your likes, and your subscription. That's it. If you want to go a step further, you can hit the notification bell or even leave your comments in the section below. It is a community. We are growing. So thank you so much, everybody. In this channel you guys are doing amazing especially the momentum is here for us uh, especially during these bear markets in biotech um, i love the enthusiasm from many of you so today's news you know this was announced earlier this morning crispr therapeutics and viacite to start clinical trial for the first gene added cell replacement therapy for treatment of type 1 diabetes initiation of patient enrollment expected by year end so before we even read some of these comments here, again, we are mid-November, so year-end means within the next month. You're not going to release something by you know, Christmas time, right? So we can expect something by next month, in the next four weeks. Um, and we will cover this program briefly in this video, uh, the type 1 diabetes program that CRISPR Therapeutics is in partnership with. But I do want to read the press release, a couple of, uh, couple of nuggets there that I want to bring up uh, to you guys so today announced that Health Canada has approved the company's clinical trial application for VCTX210, an allogenetic gene editing immune invasive stem cell derived therapy for the treatment of type 1 diabetes. Initiation of patient enrollment is expected by year end. With the approval of CTA, we are excited to bring a first class CRISPR edited cell therapy for treatment of type 1 diabetes to the clinic, an important milestone enabling a new whole new class of gene edited stem cell derived medicine. That is what Dr. Sam, CEO of CRISPR Therapeutics, have said. The combination of Viacite's leading stem cell capabilities and CRISPR Therapeutics preeminent gene editing platform has the potential to meaningfully impact the lives of patients living with type 1 diabetes. Right. Let me read this next quote here. This is from the CEO of Viasi being first into the clinical with gene editing immune invasive cell therapy to treat patients with type 1 diabetes is breaking new grounds is set a path to potentially broaden the treatable population by eliminating the need for immunosuppression with implant, implemented implanted cell therapies. Right. This approach builds on previous accomplishments from both companies is, is a, represents a major step forward in the field has really strived to provide a functional cure for this devastating diseases. So type 1 diabetes is serious. I've known people in my entourage that actually had diabetes. Actually, some of them had type 1, type 2 diabetes, which is obviously a lot more significant, a lot more uh, serious, but type 1 diabetes is no joke. Uh, I've made the statement in the past that, you know, this program, you have to look at it, the big picture, right? If they can prove they can tackle type 1 diabetes, get it through the phase 1, phase 2 trial, phase 3 potentially, and obviously get it at some point, FDA approved, then you unlock this whole type 2 diabetes program. Now, I've been told and I've been mentioned in the past uh, that type 2 diabetes is a different beast to tackle. There's a reason why they're not doing both of them in parallels. Uh, it's a different beast, and I totally agree with that statement. My point here is that you have to see it in the lens of investors, right? Investors are looking at this, especially big institutions, especially healthcare institutions. They're looking at this and say, wow, this company, CRISPR Therapeutics, can tackle type 1 diabetes. When will they be able to tap tackle type 2 diabetes in the future? So there's potential there, right? So that's how I see it in the lens of investors, but I totally agree with some of you, especially the researchers here in this channel. To state that type 2 diabetes is a different ball game. I totally agree with that. I just don't want to I want to make sure some of the things I say sometimes it's not necessarily in the lens of a researcher slash scientific uh, person, but rather in the lens of someone as an investor, right? Because this is what this channel is about. It's to provide you guys information for free. 
lead you guys to opportunities. We don't provide financial advice. We provide educational information for free for you to take it or to leave it, right? It's up to you. And that's what we're doing in this channel, especially in this video. So love these news here. I love what's going on here. Initiation of patient enrollment by the expected year end. I've sort of expected this type of press release. I just didn't like, actually expect it uh, today. I was sort of looking the, for something like this more towards 2022, but it looks like CRISPR therapeutics are, are basically getting the um, putting the accelerator here uh, to go forward with their program. Now, again, type one diabetes is a serious disease. There are many, many patients with this disease. So, if you can have one of these products FDA approved within the next three, four, five years, then it's just amazing, right? And uh, just as a, a reminder here, I'm gonna click here in their. Uh, the pipeline here. This is in co-development and co-commercialization with Viasite, right? Viasite is a huge pharma company. Uh, they have a lot of experience, a lot of talent, talent, and of course, a lot of resources. And CRISPR Therapeutics, they partner up with this company a while ago, right? This is not something new. Uh, what is new is that they're officially going forward with their CTA uh, as of next month. I love that. I love uh, what's going on here. Uh, they're basically looking at this program and you know they're going forward with it. I just love it. I think CRISPR therapeutics are doing something really amazing here. Uh, Dr. Sam, you know, he he's predicting that, right? He said it in the past how this program was big, and I'm just bullish about this program. Obviously, they they are focused on CTX001, which you know they've already cured over 50 patients with beta thalassemia and or um, sickle cell disease. So. I think it's just amazing what they're doing here with this other program. I've gotten a lot of feedback of people saying the CRISPR therapeutics is down from 60, 65% from its all time highs, specifically because they haven't really shifted away from their main bread and butter, which is CTI001. My counter argument to that is look, there's no commercialized FDA approved CRISPR drug right now. And if this company is the furthest, and if we believe they could be the first one to get it by end of 2022 or 2023, then to me, investors are going to look at this company as the front runners, right? Whether or not their technology is more efficient, whether or not the, the technology is, is more innovative or not, the reality of the thing is, is there's no commercialized product yet, right? And I made that argument the other day saying that innovation makes total sense. It always makes sense. You always want to go in a situation where you have a more innovative product or service. However, However, in a sector where there is no commercialized product yet, it makes no sense for you to look at newer companies with newer innovative methods and put them over these types of companies which are furthest in the FDA approval race, right? And that is the key point here. You have a regulatory body there that approves or disproves technologies or programs, right? And because you have that layer, your investing thesis has to include that factor has to include that blocker, right? And again, we don't provide financial advice, but my advice to you guys is to understand what is the FDA role here and what is the time frame that it takes for a product to come out of research lab all the way to a commercial product. And it does not necessarily mean just because you have a more innovative product from the pre-research lab, you have data on like mice or monkeys, that means that you can have your company worth a lot more than some of these companies who are bound to be FDA approved in the next two, three years for the, some of their programs. Food for thought, I'll leave it off like that for this video. Leave me in the comments what you guys think about this Viasite partnership, this latest news about their press release, about them going forward with, um, with their first patient by the year's end, which again is the next four weeks. Leave me in the comments below, like this video, found value. Subscribe if you have not. And thank you so much for watching. We will see each other in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Have a beautiful day. Thank you.